happy Friday. It's April 3rd, Friday. Yay, another week down. Um, I appreciate everybody um, writing in the comments. Um, you guys can write back and forth about the book. You can ask me questions about the book or whatever you like. Um, just so we can get a little more of a classroom discussion going. Again, we're going to um, read our book, which is Among the Hidden by um, Margaret Peterson Haddix. And we are on to chapter five today. So I hope you like the book so far. I'm really enjoying it. Um, wondering kind of like what's going to happen. And, you know, I keep thinking about me, if that was me in that situation. So I, I like this book so far. All right, let's start reading chapter five. Luke ate every meal after that one at the bottom step. It became a habit, but a hated one. He had never noticed before, but Mother often spoke too softly to be heard from any distance. And Matthew and Mark always made their nasty comments under their breath. So they would start laughing, often at Luke's expense, and he couldn't defend himself because he didn't even know what they had said. He couldn't even hear Mother saying, now boys, be nice. After a week or two, a lot, a lot of the time, he didn't even try to listen to the rest of the family's conversation. But even he was curious that hot July day when the letter arrived about the pigs. Matthew brought the meal in that day from the mailbox at the crossroad a mile away. Luke had never seen them, of course, but Matthew and Mark had told him that there were three mailboxes there, one for each of the families that lived on their road. Usually the Garner's mailbox was just bills or thin envelopes carrying curt orders from the government about how much corn to plant, which fertilizer to use, and where to, and where to take their crops when it was harvested. A letter from a relative was caused to celebrate, and Mother off, always dropped whatever she was doing and sat down to open it with trembling hands, calling out at intervals, Oh, Aunt Effie's in the hospital again! Or, Tss, Elizabeth's going to marry that fellow after all. Luke almost felt like he knew his relatives though they lived hundreds of miles away, and of course, they didn't even know he existed. The letter's mother wrote back, painstakingly, late at night, when she'd saved up enough money for a stamp, contained plenty of news of Matthew and Mark, but never once had mentioned Luke's name. This letter was, a, was as thick as some from Luke's grandmother, but it bore an official seal, and the return address was embossed Department of Human Habitation, Environmental Standards Division. Mark held the letter at arm's length, the way Luke had seen him hold dead baby pigs when they were had to be carried out of the barn. Dad looked worried the minute he saw the letter in Matthew's hand. Matthew put the letter down beside Dad's silverware. Dad sighed. Can't be anything but bad news, Dad said. No use ruining a good meal. It can wait. He went back to eating chicken and dumplings. Only after his last belch did he return to the envelope, and he turned it over and ran his dirt-rimmed finger under the flap. He unfolded the letter. It has come to our attention, he read aloud. Well, so far, I understand it. Then he read silently for a while, calling out inter in at intervals. Mother, what's awful? And where's the dictionary? Matthew, look up rep reprocity. Finally, he threw down the whole thick packet and proclaimed, they're gonna make us get rid of our hogs. What, Matthew asked, more serious than Mark. He talked for as long as anyone could remember about it. When I get my own farm, it's, I, it's going to be all hogs. I'll make the government let me do that somehow. Now he looked over at Dad's shoulder. You mean they're just going to make us sell a lot at one time, right? But we can build the herd back up. Nope, Dad said. Those people in them fancy new houses won't be able to stand pig smell. So we can't raise hogs no more. He threw the letter out into the center of the table for us all to see. What'd they expect building next to a farm? From his seat on the stairs, Luke had to hold himself back from going to fish the edge of the letter out of the chicken gravy and look at him at look at it him for himself. They can't do that, can they? he asked. Nobody answered. Nobody needed to. Luke felt like a fool for asking as soon as these words as soon as the words were out of his mouth. For once, he was glad of his hiding place. Mother twisted the dish rag in her hand. Those hogs are our bread and butter, she said. With grain prices the way they are. What are we going to live on? Dad just looked at her. After a moment, so did Matthew and Mark. Luke didn't know why. So that's the end of chapter five. It was another short chapter. Um, the question I have for you today is, what was the bad news the Garners received in this chapter? So they received some really devastating news. What was that news? Um, and how is this detrimental to their family? So um, how is this news going to really affect their family? What do you think that they can do about this news? Or what do you think the next step is going to be? 
um, you can write that in the comments and maybe we can have like a little class discussion because I bet you guys all have some really good ideas. So I hope you enjoy this rainy Friday um, and I will see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend.